Hello everybody, it's your friendly digital technology librarian Christy here. Um, if you can believe it, we are already on the first Friday of June. That's halfway through the year. Crazy! Um, and as always, I've got another Film Rec Friday ready for everybody. This week, my recommendations are all based on a little conversation I was having with a friend earlier on in the week. Uh, we were discussing Studio Ghibli films and it just sort of evolved into this conversation of what animation means today. And, you know, I was really curious to see what kind of animated films we have on offer. Now, personally, I really, really love animation. I have always liked it. Obviously, as a child, I watched tons of cartoons. But even as I got older, there was never a point where I was like, cartoons are for kids. I think partly because I was exposed to, say, anime early on, which as a genre of entertainment is clearly very broad when it comes to demographic audience. You know, you do have things that are targeted towards little ones, but you also very much have um, series and films that are targeted towards an adult uh, standard age audience. So, you know, going by that, I looked through what we had as far as animation goes via our three digital video platforms and I found some serious, serious gems. Um, they are, they, they cover a really huge range of themes and topics. Um, there are so many different genres available and I think that, you know, someone who's a fan of any particular genre will find something within even just these six uh, recommendations that I have for you today. But even if you don't, please do, as always, uh, make sure you explore our different uh, collections so that you can check out and see if there's something that will appeal to you other than the titles that I'm recommending today. As always, all of these recommendations are available to you entirely for free with the use of your Mylan Berlin library card. And our three video platforms are Klebnet's Overdrive, Hoopla Digital, and Canopy. Uh, so without any further ado, I'm super duper excited to just dive right in to these animated feature and series recommendations. Okay, so my very first two recommendations both come from our Clevenet Overdrive service. And let me just say before I um, get to those specific titles, if you are an anime fan, uh, especially a fan of the anime series, Clevenet's Overdrive actually has a ton of really, really, really excellent series available. So I strongly recommend you sort of explore a little bit in there and see if something will appeal to you if these two titles don't. Um, you'll have uh, series that run the gamut from uh, big machine mecha series to quiet romances and everything in between. So like I said, make sure you definitely explore Clevenet Overdrive for... Uh, anime series. There's a ton on there. Now, my first pick is for a little series that I absolutely adore. I've mentioned it before, I'm sure, uh, but if you've not watched in a while or if you, this is your first time watching, make sure you check out Emma, A Victorian Romance, seasons one and two, both of which are available on Overdrive. This series is just so wonderful. It's absolutely perfect for fans of British television, um, fans of shows like Downton Abbey, Upstairs, Downstairs, where the big cusp of storyline is about the whole class system, the mixing of classes, and this just does such a good job. Obviously from the title, it's a Victorian romance story, and it just is so charming and lovely, and perfectly British in so many ways. I mean, obviously, since it's an anime, it comes from Japan. But I think the appeal of these sort of British style stories is pretty universal. And I think there's a lot to Japanese culture that really crosses over with a Victorian era English um, sort of storyline. So Within Emma of Victorian Romance has nothing to do with, say, Emma of Jane Austen era style st storytelling. This is about a 20-year-old maid named 
Um, Emma, she's super duper hardworking. She's, you know, in service to a woman named Mrs. Stowner, who is a very good employer. It's not like she's in one of those heinous situations where her boss is like evil or just plain mean. Mrs. Stowner is just a lovely woman who really feels that Emma has value and worth. So a little bit of a fantasy there, but um, still really, really charming and lovely. Um, Emma suddenly meets this young man who is not in service, who is a part of the aristocracy named William. And there's just something about the two of them that clicks. Now, there are a ton of, you know, themes that are really common within, you know, British period piece television, you know, glances from across the room, the fact that they pretty much never, ever touch. Uh, there's always this distance, but at the same time, this tension that's there. And it's so perfectly woven into the storyline of this anime. It's crazy how well it works. Um, prior to this, I'd never seen an anime that had a British style setting. Uh, I've obviously seen a ton of anime. Like I said, I'm a huge fan. Uh, I've watched fantasy. I've watched tons of other period pieces, but I've never seen anything done with like Victorian era or Edwardian era or anything like that. Uh, and so this was so new to me in, in, in some parts and I just absolutely adored it. Like I said, this is the perfect sort of jumping off point for a fan of, say, Downton Abbey, Upstairs, Downstairs, or any of those classic period piece British TV series. It, there's, there's so much in common that it, it just, it works for you. Um, so if you like things like that, if you like those sorts of period piece British dramas, you absolutely need to watch this. The romance is light and lovely and in keeping with the setting. Not that there's anything wrong with like anachronistic British romances. Like I like Bridgerton as much as the next person, but like this is definitely a very Victorian feeling Victorian romance. Um, so yeah, if you're looking for a light, beautiful, dramatic, uh, romantic storyline, please check out Emma, a Victorian romance. It is simple in the sense that there's not like crazy, crazy drama going on. You won't get explosions or things like that going on, but it's complex in the layered emotions that are expressed. I mean, this would work so well as a live action TV series. And I think that's the true tell of whether or not an animated um, show is really, really good if I can visualize it with real people appealing to a huge audience as opposed to simply your anime audience. And I think this 100% does that. So yeah, perfect jumping off point, especially if you're not really usually an animated feature fan. This one will definitely grab you. Make sure you check out Emma Victorian Romance seasons one and two available on Cleavenet's Overdrive. Uh, my second recommendation from Cleavenet is for another anime TV series. This one is called Revolutionary Girl Utena. Um, colloquially, a lot of people just call it Utena. Um, and I remember this from years and years ago, and I have been a massive fan of this series um, since I first saw it. It is sort of a surreal fantasy, I guess along with a school drama. There's just a lot going on, a lot, a lot going on, uh, with a lot of layers and a lot of subtext. Uh, so anyway, you have this young woman named Utena who at one point in her childhood, uh, is sort of rescued by this very princely figure. She knows nothing about him. He, however, gives her this ring that she keeps and you know, she ends up kind of idolizing him. And rather than falling in love with this prince character, she wants to be him. She wants to be chivalrous. She wants to be the rescuer of people. 
she wants to always be on the side of the good, the side of the right, and she wants to fight for justice. And, and I love that element of it. And I loved it even when I was a little kid that it's not about the romance with this guy or anything, but instead it's about the ambition to embody all of the good qualities you, you see in front of you. So anyway, she grows up with this desire to be someone who helps and saves people. She ends up at this foofy sort of academy, um, Oturi Academy, where they have this incredibly unusual dueling system going on. Um, and due to, and it's so hard to talk about this series without giving everything away because the plot is so tightly woven. Um, but I'll, I'm, I'm I'm pretty sure I haven't given away anything like super duper vital any so far. Um, so yeah, they have this dueling system and due to these strange circumstances, I can say that without it being a spoiler, um, due to some circumstances outside of her, um, choosing, she ends up getting pulled into this dueling system and the ultimate goal of the dueling system is this massive prize. Now, I won't talk about the prize because that is part of the spoiler, but it, it's, it's very much keeping in theme with this storyline that sort of tweaks tropes that we are used to seeing, whether it be in anime, whether it be in um, live action Western TV shows or films. It plays with gender stereotypes and tropes. It plays with sexuality stereotypes and tropes. It plays with, you know, class. It, it, it's, it's just a really, really fascinating series. Um, and again, it definitely has this very, very strong thread of surrealism going through it, but it's also really heavy with symbolism. There's a lot of allegory going on. Um, and outside of that, it's just really beautifully done. So this is an old series, like super duper old, <laughs> super duper old. It's like from the eighties, I want to say like the late eighties, early nineties. Um, but for me, um, as a child of the eighties, I feel like the anime that I watched then is so different from the anime that we see today. Um, and the storyline is as relevant and interesting and exciting as it was, you know, 40 years ago. Um, and I just think that it's one of those stories that can definitely appeal to a very wide range of viewers. Um, certainly this one is good for people who are fans of fantasy, action, adventure, uh, people who do like stories that sort of play with those different threads that I was talking about, like with surrealism, like this is perfect for people who liked, you know, Labyrinth or, um, Mirror Mask, those Henson productions that are really kind of off kilter and strange with like the characters and the style of the setting and things like that. This will totally appeal to you if you like those kinds of stories. Um, the characters are so interesting and so fleshed out and so, I don't know. Some of them are definitely not likable and they're not supposed to be, but the ones that you are supposed to like, you absolutely love. I mean, they're just so round, well-rounded and so interesting and intricate. Um, this one is a great example of anime series that would definitely work, um, in some ways as a live action. I think the surrealism kind of kind of makes that difficult. It would definitely be something that looks more like a Jim Henson labyrinth than say like a Grey's Anatomy or a Saved by the Bell if you're looking for some other things that go with academies and schools and stuff. But I still think that this one works so so well as a good um, series to check out if you're looking to dive into anime or animated series. So yeah, Revolutionary Girl Utena really excellent, great pick, uh, and available on Klubnet's Overdrive. Okay, there are so many fantastic animated features and series available on Hoopla, but because there are also tons and tons in Canopy, I'm just going to focus on one particular rec from Hoopla today, and that is for the extraordinary, the gorgeous, the absolutely wonderful, loving Vincent. 
Now, Loving Vincent is described, I, I see often, as the first fully painted feature film. I still don't quite understand what that means, other than the entire film is animated in a painted style that is in keeping with Vincent van Gogh's real painting style. He was an impressionist painter, so you've got those short um, strokes, so everything looks like it's been painted by by him. And there's definitely a mood that is expressed with that particular style as well, and so you've got this vibe the entire way through the movie. It, it's just amazing how a particular art style can settle so heavily into the emotions uh, that are presented in a film, and it, it illustrates that so, so well. Now, Loving Vincent, in the first place, has to do with the rather controversial death of Impressionist painter Vincent van Gogh. Um, it's about a year after his uh, supposed suicide. Um, I say supposed in quotes because that's a huge portion of the storyline um, without being a spoiler. A postman in Van Gogh's town is in possession of a letter that was supposed to be delivered to Vincent's brother Theo. It never got there and so the postman sends his son off to deliver the letter. It's a big deal to him that this letter makes it to its destination and so the son, with misgivings, heads off to deliver his uh, message. Now, along the way, he begins to grow very, very suspicious of uh, Vincent's death. And there, there's just so many questions and so many variables and things that don't add up for him. And he begins to meet people who are actually part of Vincent's life. Um, everyone from like a doctor who had cared for him when he was having emotional troubles to a young woman whose relationship with him is sort of unclear um and other people like innkeepers who had just sort of randomly met him over time but got to know him well as uh the years went by and every time he talks to someone, it, it makes him question more and more how Van Gogh's suicide makes any sense whatsoever. Um, it's an incredibly intense film, I think, uh, because you're dealing with a topic that's so challenging to begin with, um, the art giving it such a, an, a lot of extra emotion every time. And... And part of the storylines are told through Van Gogh's actual artwork, like replications of, you know, his real paintings. And that always evokes other emotions because his work was so visceral. I mean, it's hard to stare at one of his paintings, whether it be super duper famous like Starry Night or something super obscure. It's hard to look at one of his pieces and not feel something. And seeing those on screen gives a very similar vibe. So every scene has these little extra bits of added emotion. So if you are interested in really emotional, really character driven stories, if you like sort of mysterious plots, because there's definitely a lot of that going on in this, if you like beautiful art, definitely a lot of that going on. It, it it's, it's an, it's a win-win. Whether you're an art fan, whether you're a Van Gogh aficionado, whether you like animation at all, you absolutely should watch Loving Vincent. The The voice cast is really, really excellent. Um, and just the storyline in general is, is so tightly woven and, and really, really, really beautiful. So please do check out Loving Vincent. It's available on Hoopla Digital and you will be so thankful that you saw it. I, I, I promise it's, it's just a great, great film. Okay, my last three recommendations are all coming from our Canopy service, and these three really are so wonderful. I could have recommended all six 
I could have recommended 20, uh, I, I could have recommended countless animated films that are available on Canopy. So if you are interested in animation at all, um, if you have just the slightest inkling of interest, make sure you check out Canopy's animated films. They are so beautifully done. Anyway, my first pick is for the anime feature film, A Letter to Momo. I love this movie so much. Um, it surprisingly comes from the creators of Ghost in the Shell. Ghost in the Shell is this gritty sci-fi cyberpunk movie and series and redone movie and redone series uh, that is about a million miles away emotionally from A Letter to Momo. And I'm glad that I didn't know that the creators were the same because I would have been so confused throughout because again, the, the flavor of the two storylines is so disparate. Um, while you've got a very hard gritty vibe going on with Ghost in the Shell, you have this soft fantasy, surreal, very heart centric, emotional story going on with a letter to Momo. And I just couldn't love this movie more if I tried. Um, it's beautiful, beautiful animation is, uh, totally hand drawn. It's, um, not one of the CGI computer animated series at all. So if you are longing for that old school style, definitely, definitely check this one out. Um, it follows the story of this young girl named Momo. She has recently lost her father. Um, and right before his death, they had ended up in a fight. And the only thing she has left, or the last thing she has left, I should say, is this unfinished letter. The unfinished letter is barely that. It just says, Dear Momo, and then nothing. Um, and it sort of perfectly mirrors that abrupt, stalled out, feeling that you get with the loss of, a, of the un unexpected loss of a loved one, like that sort of abrupt nature is exactly illustrated in this letter that she has. And she's just very lost. Now, her mother decides that they need to start over. So they, they leave their home and move to this rather isolated area. And in her new home, she discovers that there are three sprites spirits living in her attic now they're super mischievous they cause a ton of problems around town but they are at heart good-natured creatures um and it's actually these three spirits that end up helping her sort of come to terms with her father's death and it's it's just amazing how emotionally stirring this story is when you're watching it. I absolutely cried so hard in, and, and I was very happy to, to watch this a second time. Cause I saw it when it first came out. And then just before, uh, we, we put this set of recommendations together just so that I could refresh. And it was as emotionally gripping the second time around as it was the first. Um, there's so much good natured humor in this. It's not all doom and gloom or anything like that. It, it, it's, I, it's very typically Japanese, I think, uh, with regard to their more straightforward storylines when you're not dealing with like the big budget sort of sci-fi fantasy kind of stories. This one is very quiet. Obviously you have fantasy elements that run throughout. Um, you've got those three spirits that are helping her, but the characters themselves, like Momo herself, her mother, um, they're, they're, they're just very normal. And I, I love that sort of juxtaposition. You've got the fantasy, like the larger than life element with your everyday life. And I, there, there's just something absolutely beautiful about it, I think. Um, so if you're looking for something kind of quiet, something really beautiful, um, something that's guaranteed to sort of tug at your heartstrings, please check out A Letter to Momo. It's wonderful. I would say probably the most similar kind of mainstream feeling to this would be like 
I guess parts, the more emotional parts of Spirited Away. Studio Ghibli is its own thing. I absolutely adore Studio Ghibli. Like I said, this is what that the discussion about Ghibli is what spurred me to do this entire rec set in the first place. But, but I think those sort of complex um, fantasy elements mixed with the everyday, I, I think that kind of vibe is similar to what you find in A Letter to Momo. So again, Letter to Momo available on Canopy and absolutely recommended. You will not regret it. Uh, my final two recommendations from Canopy are both for short films, and these are both really, really excellent. I love a good short film, mainly because they're great when you just need a quick, quick pick me up, but you don't have time to really like sit and dedicate tons of like extra hours to something. Um, the first one is this 12 minute short called Jonas in the Sea. I was immediately grabbed by the art style. It reminds me of a video game called Mechanarium, where the art is reminiscent of like paper cuttings that are animated through stop motion animation. I, I love things like that. It, it Pieces of this look almost like paper marionettes, really, um, rather than traditional animation. And, and that art style is what I find the most grabbing about uh, about it in the first place. And now the storyline is pretty simple. It's about a young boy whose only dream is to make it to the sea. He wants to be a part of the sea. And that's the 12 minutes that you get him attempting to live there. And it's so charming. It's so cute. And it's just beautifully made. It is a beautiful, beautiful film. So if you're looking for something uh, charming with extraordinary art, please check out Jonas and the Sea. It's great. And it's short enough that you can watch it on a lunch break and then still have extra time to chit chat with coworkers. So Jonas and, the, Jonas and the Sea available on Canopy. And my very final recommendation is another short. This one is about the same time length and it's called The Orchestra. Uh, I actually saw The Orchestra years and years ago. Um, and it's just a really charming, cute little film. Uh, it takes place in a world where everybody's lives are um, soundtracked by live tiny little bands, little bands that could fit in your hands. Um, one, I love this concept. I want a tiny band of my own to come and play the soundtrack of my life. Um, two, besides it being just like a really cute concept, uh, it's also really interesting how they thought everything out. The main character in this is an older gentleman who's very, very lonely and shy living in this retirement community. And his debilitating anxiety and shyness make his orchestra play out of tune all the time. Like they can't, you know, blend. They are always in different keys and you get this strident, unpleasant and unappealing sound that comes out. So even when he wants to try to make connections with other people in his community, he can't because everything is touched by this cacophony that nobody wants to hear. Like that strident, sharp, out of tune sound that's played underneath everything that he is puts people off. And, and it's such a beautifully sad metaphor for real life. Um, and of course, throughout the course of this short film, when he is more able to be comfortable with himself, that's when his little orchestra starts to play without all of the difficulties that they were having at the get go. And I'm fascinated how you can do this kind of a storyline in just, you know, 10, 15 minutes, but it effectively does that. And it's just a really lovely, charming movie, regardless of length of time. Um, so if you like, you know, mu music, if you like, quirky storylines. If you like stories about people who have overcome their own personal difficulties, if you are interested in storylines that do play with major metaphors, 
uh, mental or if you are interested in storylines that really are clearly sort of um, working along the lines of mental health issues make sure you check out the orchestra it is lovely it is adorable in places and it's 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 very heartwarming in others so please do check out the orchestra it's a lovely lovely film and available on canopy um so with that those are my six recommendations for the week but like i said there are so many amazing amazing animated series and films out there on our three services um overdrive is definitely the place to go if you're an anime fan off the top of my head, I can also tell you, like, there's Shingu, which is sort of like a classic mecha story with, like, the, the giant machines going on. Um, there's uh, Super Gals, if you just want something, like, light and funny and fluffy. Uh, there, there's tons of series that are on uh, Overdrive, so please do check those out, in addition to a number of animated features as well. Um with Hoopla, I know I just talked about Loving Vincent. It's just, I talk about Hoopla all the time. I am a massive, massive fan of the service uh, myself. But there are an amazing number of animated features that are on there that you will absolutely love um, in addition to uh, Loving Vincent. And then on Canopy, I can't tell you how many amazing things are on there. Um, whether you are looking for something short uh, whether you're looking for long, long form, whether you're looking for something more mainstream feeling, more art house feeling, it's going to be on Canopy. Uh, they have curated such an extraordinary selection of, of titles on there, um, award winners, critically acclaimed uh, features. They, it's, it's just an exceptional, exceptional uh, collection of titles. So Canopy, you can't go wrong. So... Um, please do check out those services. If, if one of these six doesn't appeal, something on there will definitely do so. If you have recommendations for animated features or shorts or series that you would like to make for the rest of us, uh, please do comment and let us know what those are. I am always, always, always looking for recommendations and I absolutely love when you guys do comment and let us know. Um, if you're looking to recommend different themes for the future, of course, I'm always, looking for new themes to explore. So please uh, comment with those as well. And with that, I am going to call this video done and wish everybody a fantastic week. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.